Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this Flutter game development series where we are making a 2D top-down space shooter called Space Escape using the Flame Engine. In the previous video, we implemented an enemy manager which spawns new enemies at regular interval of time. And we did this by introducing the enemy and enemy manager classes. Which is all cool, but to call this game a space shooter, we need to have some firepower. And this is exactly what we are going to do in this video. Basically, we'll be adding the ability to fire bullets at enemies by tapping on screen. So let's get started. First, we'll need a class to represent a bullet. For this, I'll create a new file under game directory called bullet. In this file, let's create a new class called bullet. So as bullet is just another moving sprite, similar to enemy and player, this class will also extend from sprite component. And to speed things up, I'll just copy over the constructor from player class and we'll just modify its name to bullet. Next, we'll need a speed with which the bullet should travel. So for that, let's add a double field called speed and set it to a value higher than player and enemy speeds. Now to actually move the bullet, we need to modify its position per frame of the game, which means we'll need to override the update method from base component. In this method, I'll change the position of bullet using a vector pointing up the bullet speed and delta time. Vector of 0,-1 implies that the bullet will travel in upwards direction. And similar to enemies, bullets will also have to be destroyed if they travel beyond the screen. So here, I'll check if this.position.y is less than 0. Because right now, bullets can only go out of the screen from top. If this condition is true, we'll mark the bullet to be removed before next iteration of game loop begins. So this completes the definition of bullet class. Next, let's see how to spawn bullets when we tap on the screen. For that, let's go to the game.dart file. Here, you can see that we have used pan detector mixin to detect pan gestures. So similar to this, I'll add the tap detector mixin to detect tap gestures. And now we can override the on tap down method from this tap detector mixin to get notified when players tap on the screen. In this method, I'll first create a new object of bullet class. And for inputs to this constructor, I'll copy these lines from player constructor from onload method. Okay, now to represent a bullet, I'll use this sprite from the same sprite sheet that we are using for the spaceship. But as you can see, we don't have a reference to the sprite sheet in this method. So to access it in on tap down, I'll convert this local sprite sheet object into a field variable. And now we can replace all the references to local sprite sheet object with this new field variable. In the on tap down method, I'll change the sprite ID to 28 so that we get the correct sprite. Next, let's change the position where the sprite should be initially placed. So to make it seem like the bullet is fired by the player spaceship, I'll set this position to player.position. And finally, let's change the anchor point of bullet to center and then add it to the components list of our game class. Now let's build and run this code to check if it works. First, I'll check if pan gestures are still working or not. Okay, it seems that they are working fine. And now, if I just tap on the screen, we are getting some bullets moving upwards. And once they go out of the screen, they get destroyed. Okay, now let's try to detect the collision between enemies and bullets. For this, we could have used the Force2D package, which is just a port of famous Box2D physics engine. But our game is very simple and we just want to detect the overlap between two sprites. Using a full-blown physics engine to do this will be an overkill. So instead, we'll rely on some of the built-in methods from Flame Engine for detecting overlaps in sprite rectangles. First, I'll override the update method of this game class. Then, let's get a reference to a list of all the bullets currently in the game world. This can be done using where type method on this dot component. Next, we need the list of enemies. But unfortunately, we cannot get that list in the same way we got bullets list. This is because all the enemies are generated by enemy manager and are added to its children list instead of the main components list of this game instance. So to get the list of enemies, we'll have to get a reference to enemy manager created in onload method. Which means we'll have to add one more field in our game class to store a reference to enemy manager. Now let's use this field at all the places. And back in update method, we can get the list of enemies by using the children property of enemy manager. So here, I'll loop over all the enemies using a for loop. 
but you can see that the children list getter returns a unmodifiable list of components. So to be 100% sure that the components we are getting are of type enemy, I'll use the where type method and will ask specifically for enemy type. Inside this for loop, I'll again use another for loop to loop over all the bullets. Basically, we want to check the overlap between each enemy and each bullet. So inside this inner for loop, I'll use the contains point method on current enemy. This method returns true if given point lies inside the rectangle of current sprite. So to check if current bullet is inside the enemy sprite, I'll pass in position as bullet.absolutecenter. And if this condition is true, we can remove both these components from the game world. This will make sure that whenever any bullet hits any enemy, both of them get deleted from the game world. Now, if we run the game at this point, everything will seem to be working as expected. But if you look at this code closely, you'll find that it is doing a lot of unnecessary iterations. Like for example, after removing this enemy and bullet, the inner loop will still keep going through all the other bullets to check if any one of them lies within the enemy sprite. This is unnecessary because the enemy has already been marked to get removed. So the best thing that we can do here is break the inner for loop if any of the bullet hits the current enemy. This will make sure that the inner loop stops and we move on to the next enemy in outer for loop. And just to optimize this logic a little more, we can check whether the current enemy and bullet are already marked to be removed. This can be done by checking the value of should remove property at the start of both the loops. If this condition is true, we can just skip that iteration using continue. Checking should remove of enemy is not necessary at this point. But we might need it in future if we decide to destroy enemies using some other powers. All these continue and break statements are needed because calling remove just marks the component to get removed before the next update cycle of the game loop begins. So as far as the current update cycle is concerned, all those components are perfectly valid and we have to explicitly make sure that we skip them from this collision detection logic. So now let's build and run this code to see if it works as expected. And as you can see, whenever the bullet hits the enemy, both of them get removed from the game. I might later on decide to display some explosion animation when this happens. But for now, this is fine. Now before we end this video, I will add one more check at the end of this outer for loop. This check will detect if player has hit any of the enemy sprites. For now, I'll just print something in the console when this happens. But later on, when we'll introduce health system, we can modify this to decrease player's health. So let's quickly build and run this. And as you can see, we are seeing this message in the debug console once player hits an enemy. Also, don't worry if this message is not getting printed for every enemy. This happens because the debug console avoids printing identical messages multiple times. If you want to be 100% sure, you can put a breakpoint inside the if check to see if it gets hit for every single player enemy collision. But anyways, that was all for this video. I hope you were able to follow along and learn something new. As always, all this code is available in the GitHub repository linked in the description. For any other doubts related to this project, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you want, you can even get in touch with me on Instagram, Twitter, Telegram or Gmail. All the links are in the description. So if you liked the video, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.